Now that we know what Genworth was trying to accomplish and why, let's look at how it all came together with Ryan and Muhammad. Thank you for coming to our GitLab talk. We're going to be talking about uh, our journey from Omnibus GitLab to Kubernetes and what we've learned and how you can do it yourself. So without further ado, uh, a little bit of introduction for us. Uh, my name is Ryan Heilman. I'm a uh, software engineer at Genworth uh, Financial as part of a rotational program they have there. Uh, you can find me on LinkedIn or on Twitter at Ryan79. And with that, I'd like to introduce myself as well. I'm Mohammed Malik. I'm also a software engineer here at Genworth Financial, and those are my Twitter handle and LinkedIn profile. Please feel free to add me. Uh, let's get right into it. First off, we're going to start off with a brief overview, and I'd like to preface that with um, our manager, Frank Ford, will be giving a much more in-depth discussion uh, as to what necessitates a migration like this. However, a brief overview of that would be that there are a multitude of reasons why. Many of them are inherently within Kubernetes themselves, which is scalability, upgradability, and fault tolerance. And with that, we're just going to go ahead into the technical aspects. And so there, let's get started with the infrastructure of your cluster. You want to ask yourself these imperative three questions. What is, where is the cluster located? How is the cluster infrastructure configured? And what's deployed in the cluster already? And so to answer that really, um, it really doesn't matter the, for the first question. The first question, it's Kubernetes is Kubernetes. Doesn't, whatever cloud provider you're on, the nuances between each, there's gonna be slight differences, but regardless of that, Kubernetes is Kubernetes. Uh, second off, you want to get into how is the cluster infrastructure configured? You wanna take a look at persistent storage, TLS resources, or TLS and what resources are allocated. Lastly, you wanna take a look at if GitLab Runner is installed in the cluster. You wanna take a look at if you have object storage via MinIO or traffic versus Nginx deployed in the cluster already. And so can you go ahead and on to the next slide, please? And so with that, you want to take into account how the cluster's infrastructure is configured. And what we mean by that is how the cluster is set up to handle things such as persistent storage, uh, TLS, and what's running in the cluster. As I mentioned before, proper configuration for persistent storage is imperative. This is something that really confused us two for a bit, uh, since improper config configuration excuse me, can result in unexpected behavior. For example, it is vitally important to have persistent storage volumes dynamically allocated and to have the scope of an existing MinIO deployment limited to just a single persistent volume. However, this is standard Kubernetes convention. And as you work on and deploy a Kubernetes cluster, this becomes quite familiar. When we began this project, we were working with an immature cluster where the persistent volumes were manually allocated and recycled as needed. And so, and additionally, our MinIO instance was not properly scoped. However, these factors ended up wiping our GitLab deployment in the cluster. And this is obviously not what persistent storage means and is supposed to act. And so this took many painstaking days of debugging and testing to determine that dynamic persistent storage was the root cause of all of this. And so you wouldn't want to do what we accidentally did, where it was accidentally deleted our object storage at 4.30 on a Friday. Um, that's all right, though. We ended up recovering from that. Uh, furthermore, let's go into how TLS infrastructure is set up. This is key um, to getting your GitLab deployed to the cluster. This is more so of an issue for on-prem clusters, and so it could apply to the other applications and cloud providers, however. It's more specific to on-prem. The GitLab Helm chart natively supports using Cert Manager for certificates, which is also the Kubernetes standard for certificate management as well as Cert Manager easily connects with a number of signing sources, notably Let's Encrypt and HashiCorp Vault. Uh, one tidbit to be aware of is that the internal cluster certificates are needed for GitLab's many processes, and they may be preemptively terminated at your load balancer. Finally, you will need to consider what is already in the cluster. The GitLab Helm chart, which is a package manager, which we'll cover in a, a minute here, uh, it installs a number of dependencies by default. Uh, many of these dependencies are very common and popular in Kubernetes cluster architectures. So there is a good chance you already have them installed 
um, if you have a Kubernetes uh, cluster deployed. Uh, however, we'll cover what to do in these cases when we go over the Helm start. Um, could you actually go back a slide, please? Uh, furthermore, going into your cluster infrastructure, you, GitLab recommends that you have eight virtual CPUs and 30 gigabytes of RAM uh, for its minimum requirements. However, with that, we've also seen that the GitLab runner can consume a lot of resources and take over nodes. So you want to make sure that you do also have some extra resources allocated for this. Uh, go ahead and go into the next slide, please. Thank you. Uh, and so getting started with the prerequisites and Helm package manager. So the four um, prerequisites, can you go to the next slide, please? Thank you. So the four prerequisites for deploying GitLab into the Kubernetes cluster is first, you want to ensure that you actually do have a GitLab instance running. Um, you want to make sure that it is not in a down state. It is up and running and good to go. You want to verify the integrity of all your Git repositories prior to the migration to ensure full transfer of data, as well as the third prerequisite, which is the most important, you want to make sure that you have a deployment of GitLab in your cluster that is the same version of Omnibus, of your Omnibus installation. Um, this is imperative as the configuration between the two, as well as the one-to-one -one transfer will be different if your Helm deployment in the cluster is, say, a upgraded version. Um, this may cause some unexpected errors and loss of data. And so additionally, object storage must be set up and ready to go for the Helm deployment. Uh, GitLab natively or inherently within the Helm's chart deploys, helps deploy MinIO. However, you can use any external object storage such as AWS S3 or Google Cloud Storage. Last, and then you can go on to the next slide, please. Furthermore, the actual GitLab Helm chart um, Helm is a package manager for Kubernetes. It's one of the many widely known package managers. Uh, it allows you to install various packages called charts to keep with Kubernetes uh, subnautical terms in the cluster and configure them with a values.yaml file. You must use the appropriate Helm chart for the version of GitLab you wish to install. Uh, the versions are nine off from the actual GitLab versions. And so GitLab's newest release of 14.0.0 would be associated with the Helm chart version 5.0. Uh, furthermore, we have the specific chart location as well as the how to download the chart locally to your local machine and template it out on the commands there listed below. Go ahead and on to the next slide, please. And so here we have included a few screen caps of the Helm's chart uh, to briefly go over. Uh, here you can definitely see, um, one second, my apologies. Uh, in the top left-hand corner, you can see that the host domain has example.com, which you can specify to your URL endpoint. You, there is HTTPS, which is enabled true, which um, you'd want to, because it's statistically known that many company or developers use HTTPS over SSH instead of SSH uh, when uh, pulling and cloning repositories. And so you want to ensure that this is true to allow full functionality there. Uh, furthermore, ingress, uh, you can have the Nginx, which is default in Kubernetes provider. However, uh, traffic is also works, as that's widely used. Further, uh, you have MinIO below that, where you can specify or install and enable MinIO through the Helm chart itself if you don't have object storage previously set up. Uh, here, you can also specify the credentials. And there's also additional services, such as Grafana, which is a metrics dashboard that come within the uh, Helm's chart that are allow it to be deployed, and you can watch the CPU usage and memory usage of your cluster. Um, you can also granularly deploy object storage and large file systems uh, with their own credentials and their own um, services. Lastly, you can also have Cert Manager, like I mentioned, with Let's Encrypt deployed here via the Helm's chart. Uh, however, as you can see here, it's Let's uh, it's comped it out. And you can have it manually install it, or you can install it yourself and connect it with your own instance of Cert Manager. And with that, I'll pass it off to Ryan to further get into the migration. All right. Thank you, Mohammed. So let's talk about actually getting this installed in Kubernetes. Uh, Mohammed kind of walked you through a bit of the Helm chart just there and how you can 
p configure different parts of it and tweak different aspects of it to get you the version of GitLab that you want to be running and that works for you. Um, but we actually want to get this thing in the cluster and working with it. So once you have your values file configured, it's all set up. All you have to do is run a simple Helm install command, pass it that file, give it a name, and tell it uh, where the main chart files are, and it will do the rest. It'll use your kubeconfig file to install it in the cluster for you. Um, if you have a pre-installed runner, you're going to need to acquire that runner registration token and give it to the runner so that way it can do those uh, CICD pipelines and you can test that out. Um, now, you're gonna be reinstalling GitLab many times. This isn't, you're not gonna just install it once and be done. Likely you're going to be tweaking the values file, installing it, see what works, take it down, change a couple other things, reinstall it. So you're gonna be very familiar with this process. Now let's actually get on to the nitty gritty details of doing the migration. We finally made it. We've gone through and we've installed GitLab. We have it running and working in the cluster. Now we need to get all of our existing stuff on there. Right now it's just a blank version of GitLab. It's not very useful in terms of comparable to our old version with all our uh, repo stuff. So the first thing we need to do is migrating existing files to object storage. We're going to need to hook up our Omnibus GitLab version to the object storage that we're using for the Kubernetes version of GitLab that we just installed. So what you're gonna wanna do is go into your GitLab Rails file and you're gonna set up this object storage connection. This one's specifically for uploads in this example here, uh, but you're going to want to do this for any uploads artifacts, LFS that you have, uh, and set it up with some sort of object storage. In this example, it's AWS S3, or it could be a MinIO uh, S3 simulation. Um, you can use another object storage system as well. You're gonna run a, CT, or a GitLab CTL reconfigure command, and then a GitLab break for each of the objects that you are going to be migrating. This one specific for uploads, but like I said, you're gonna do it for artifacts, LFS, etc. Next, when you're gonna to need to do a backup of the Omnibus installation, um, we're not really doing a migration the way we think of the word. We're actually more doing more of a clone and recovery to the new uh, Kubernetes version of GitLab that we just installed. So the first part of that is going to be creating a backup tarball. It's just gonna run a simple GitLab write command and we're gonna leave out the artifacts and LFS uh, artifacts, LFS, and uploads because we already hooked those up to our object storage. The tarball needs to use uh, the name convention of timestamp version GitLab backup.tar. Um, the timestamp and version are going to become important in a future step, so keep that in mind. And we're going to place that backup tarball into the GitLab backups bucket in our object storage service that is connected to our Kubernetes instance of GitLab. Uh, you can also host it on a public URL that could be access from the task runner, uh, or you can get a local copy and then place that local copy into the task runner pod and run it on the pod itself. But we're gonna go with the default method of just using the GitLab backups bucket um, for the rest of our explanation. Um, so next we need to move on to restoring the secrets. We need to update them to what they were with our Omnibus installation instead of whatever kind of generic secrets that it created when we installed the GitLab file. So, or installed the GitLab Helm chart. Uh, so first thing we're gonna do is gonna create a local YAML file and use the values that were found in the GitLab secrets.json uh, file on our Omnibus installation to uh, provide us a Kubernetes secret. We're gonna use the um, this format here and just fill in these values from the GitLab secrets JSON file. Next, we just need to delete the existing secret uh, using a kubectl delete secret uh, command, very simple. And we're gonna recreate that secret with the same name uh, as the one we just deleted. And we're gonna pass it in that file, that local YAML file that we created. And all we need to do then is restart the pod so that they use the new secret. We can use this by just deleting them. We have the deployment still up, so they'll come right back with the new secrets ready to go. So moving on, we can actually restore from that tarball. Uh, that's actually a pretty simple process. We can just use a kubectl comm exec command on the task runner pod and give it the timestamp version of the name in our tarball. That's why that was important. We're going to reference it here and it's going to go look in that bucket and get the timestamp version tarball from it. If you are restoring from a URL, like we mentioned, it was possible earlier, 
you instead of doing the dash t timestamp version here, you would actually use dash f and give it the URL instead. Uh, the restoration process will erase all the existing database contents and replace them with the contents of the tarball. This can take a different uh, amount of time depending on how big your GitLab instance is. But once that is up and running, you're going to need to get and update the new runner registration token from your recovered version of GitLab because it's going to have been overwritten by the backup. So you're just going to get that, update your runner again like you probably did during testing. Uh, and finally, one last thing we need to do is we're going to need to run our kubectl exec command on the task manager pod to enable some Kubernetes features. Since we're coming from Omnibus to Kubernetes, GitLab has some special Kubernetes features that we're going to need to turn on. And that's it. You've done it. Congratulations. Your GitLab instance has been migrated to Kubernetes. It's all ready to go. All we need now to do is point your DNS entry so it points to that Kubernetes instance instead of your old Omnibus instance. And you can get rid of that old thing. Who needs it anymore anyways? We're all ready to go rock and roll with the new Kubernetes instance. Yeah, well done, and guys. Thank you. Thank you. Come. Thank you for listening to our talk. We should be around for a bit of a Q&A, but thank you for... Uh, listening and good luck with your mm -hmm. migration. Have fun with the rest of GitLab commit guys.